right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to start the first video in a new little playlist of videos that's going to be coming out for you. The Airbus Cockpit Everything Explained. So what I'm going to do is take a small section of the cockpit, talk about each switch in that section, and then we're going to eventually, over time, piece together the entire Airbus Cockpit. Now, this is not meant for real, real world study. This is not meant for type rating training in real life. Please consult your company manuals and training documents. This is for explain purposes only. There are limitations within the sim. There are systems that are not modeled. There are systems that are modeled slightly different from real life and some systems may be modeled inaccurately. Everything forth in these videos is going to be for desktop flight simulation and entertainment only. All right, guys, so on to the overhead, we're going to start out this video series in the top left corner of the Airbus overhead. We're going to look at the ADIR panel. Now, we are in the Airbus A320 from Flight Factor. The A319 and 321 have a slightly different ADIRS panel. I will cover that in a second video. It does the same thing, essentially. However, it is a little bit older model, and there are some other fun functions, some minor differences between the two. But in today's video, we're going to focus on the A320. First off, what is the ADIRS? ADIRS, or ADIRS, is the Air Data and, and Initial Reference System. So it's important that you understand there are two separate systems working here. We have Air Data and we have Inertial Reference. Let's look at our switches here in the cockpit. We have IR1, IR3, IR2, ADR1, ADR3, ADR2. So you can see that there are three separate systems and they are labeled 1, 2, and 3. Our normal procedure is going to come into the cockpit and begin the alignment phase by moving one of the ADIR selectors to the nav mode, wait for the align light to illuminate, wait for the on battery light to illuminate, and then extinguish. Each time that we turn on an ADIR, we want to verify that the align light comes on and that the on battery light illuminates and extinguishes. The reason for this is that we are verifying that the aircraft's ADIR system has the ability, should it lose normal power supply, that it can revert to aircraft battery power. If the ADIRS reverts to battery power, it will drain the aircraft batteries at a rapid rate. There's, if this happens on the ground, you're going to have a ground horn that will be blaring downstairs. And you will also get an on-bat ECAM message depending on the aircraft software. All right, so now that we know how to turn them on and begin the alignment process on the ADIRS panel, let's talk a little bit about what is the difference between IR and ADR. All right, so let's talk about the IR function of the ADIRS system. So the inertial reference system supplies different types of information such as attitude, flight path vector, or the bird, track, heading, acceleration, and angular rates also has ground speed and aircraft position. All right, so now that you know some of the basic functions for the aircraft IR system, let's quickly go over a couple different light scenarios that you may encounter with the A320 IR. Now, the very simple one is a steady fault light on the IR. If you encounter a steady IR fault light, that means your IR has failed and it cannot be recovered. Now, there is a possibility to have a semi or partial failure of the IR system. This will happen and will you be able to tell by seeing a flashing fault light on the IR. If it is a flashing fault light, this means that navigation function is lost. However, attitude and heading may be recovered in attitude mode. That is the reason we have the attitude position on the IR selector switch. We have off, nav, and then attitude mode. So if you have a flashing fault light, it's possible that you can recover the heading and attitude function. All right, so the other light situations you may encounter if you fly with failures or if you're just doing a normal alignment is the flashing white align light. Now, there is several reasons that this could happen in the real aircraft. I'm not sure how well they're modeled in X-Plane, but I'll just go over them with you briefly. If you get a flashing white align light on the ground, it means one of the, few, one of the following situations has been occurring. Either the present position is not entered within 10 minutes of alignment or within three minutes of the fast alignment selection. So you haven't entered your aircraft's position in the ADIRS. Sometimes you notice this on my streams when I go ahead and I just put the ADIRS into align mode, but I don't actually start the stream until a few minutes later and I go up to the overhead and you can see the white align lights are flashing. So that is why I don't have the IR 
alignment process complete because I have not entered the aircraft's position in the MCDU. Now, I don't know if this is modeled, but if there is a large difference in lat long between shutdown position and entered position. So let's say the aircraft shuts down in Tampa and they remove the IR and they put it in a different aircraft and then it wakes up and it's in Detroit. If that happens, then you will get a flashing align as well. Not really a case for x so we won't talk about that one too much further. Now, I don't know if this is modeled either, but if the aircraft should move during alignment, you will disrupt the alignment phase and you will get a white flashing light in the uh, push button. Now, on the 320, depending on the software, you will not actually get a, I, a white align light on the overhead. Now, this is interesting because I don't know why Flight Factor has it like this. I don't know because with Flight Factor software, I almost think that this is incorrect, but I could be wrong because there are so many different versions of the Airbus out there. In general, though, I have personally seen on R320s, the white align light is not on the overhead. Instead, it is a ECAM memo, which says IRS in align. This IRS in align will flash according to the white align flashing light with the same scenario. So if you haven't entered your position within 10 minutes or the aircraft IR has been moved during the alignment phase or it shut down in one spot and it is turned on in another location with a significant difference between lat and long, you will get an IRS in align flashing ECAM memo in green. So I don't necessarily know if this modeling is 100% correct. There is possibility that there is a, so a different software version out there where the white align light is also on the 320 overhead. All right, so now that we talked about some of the fault lights for the IRs, let's talk a little bit about the AD portion of the ADIRU system. We'll talk about their core functions and a corresponding fault light in any of the three AD push buttons. So some of the ADR functions or the air data functions are airspeed mock, angle of attack, temperature, and overspeed warnings. So think of a... Um, barometric type system or a pitot-static system on your smaller aircraft. That's what your ADRs are for. So we have two separate systems in each box, if you will. We have an ADR1 and we have an IR1. We have an ADR3, AD IR3, and so forth. All right, so now that we know the information that the air data computers gives us as pilots, let's talk about the other functions of the switch. So there is a fault light possible for all three of the ADR computers. If that comes on, that just means that there is a fault with the associated ADR computer that will probably be coupled with a ECAM message telling the pilots to select the air data switching to Captain 3 or FO3 as appropriate. We'll talk about switching computers here in a little bit further on in the series, but know that the captain has ADR1, the first officer has ADR2. If either one of those were to fail, the crew is able to then switch to the air data three position and use the third computer and recover all of the information that they may have lost from that fault such as airspeed mock angle of attack or barometric altitude so then at that point the pilot affected on that side of the cockpit would then return to normal for the duration of the flight so that's a little bit about the ADRs. I know that's a little bit in depth, but there are failures simulated in both the TOLUS and the flight factor now. So if you do get a fault message up there, know that you are it is possible that you may lose some of that information, but you can remedy it with using switching computers. And we'll get to those in a later video. All right, so now that we talked about the functions of both the AD and the IR portion of the ADRs, just a few other light switches on this panel here that we'll talk about. The one above the eight ears on battery light is the PA in use light. That will illuminate when a PA is in use. And the cockpit door video, I'm not going to discuss anything in the cockpit that has any correlation to aviation safety. So um, you can use your imagination on that push button right there. So that's going to wrap up the ADIR panel in the Flight Factor A320. I hope to see you guys again here very soon for the next cockpit video. Thank you.